most recent uh, blood work. Hey guys, Adam here. Welcome back to my channel and episode 100 of The Ways. Uh, I've been trying to figure out what to do for this episode and stick around for, until the end because there is a t-shirt giveaway since this is episode 100. I thought what I would do today for episode 100 is to have a little informal sit-down chat about my most recent uh, blood work. Because uh, I'm sure there is more than one of you who have been watching my videos who have wondered from time to time if I'm actually healthy as an older, bigger guy. Um, I'm 50 years old. I'll soon be 51. I am not light. I mean, I am 256 pounds today and I fluctuate between 252 and 258 pretty much any day of the week. I'm five foot nine. So if you went by the BMI as a metric, I would be morbidly obese, <laughs> which is why uh, I think the BMI needs to go. It's outdated because it doesn't take into account body composition, muscle mass, and all of that good stuff. So, and I'm sitting here in my dining room. I don't have an office. Uh, I don't have gel in my hair. So this is as raw and unfiltered as you can get, guys. But... I think it'd be fun to look at this blood work to see if I'm actually healthy on the inside. And if you remember, I did those two episodes uh, just a couple weeks ago on the halo effect where I touched on uh, health in fitness. And is it healthy today? Because most influencers are really pushing that ultra lean look. And if I were to think about it, I don't think a lot of people would choose to be my build uh, they would choose to be their favorite influencers build and they are all lean. So anyway, am I, am I healthy? Uh, do I have high cholesterol? Do I have high blood pressure? Am I pre-diabetic? Those are things that I'm sure some of you have thought about. Um, but I get my blood work done regularly so I know all the answers to those questions. But what does the blood work say? So I think what I'll do is just go through each uh, item on the report and we can just have a little discussion about it. And of course, if there's anybody out there that, that is really an authority on blood work and I say something that's incorrect, you know, please correct me. Um, I'm certainly not an expert, uh, especially when it comes to test levels. And I have my testosterone added to this blood work rec. I don't normally, because I don't pay too much attention to my test levels, because I feel good, I feel strong. I don't think I have low testosterone, but what will the blood work say? And the reason why I had my test levels uh, added to this report is because some of you may not know, but I've been dealing with facial hair alopecia for several months now and I've been trying to track down what is the cause um, and I thought maybe a drastic shift in hormone levels may be the cause of why my you know my my eyebrow hair is falling out and my facial hair has gotten very patchy so anyway let's just go through uh, each one and we'll start off with the urinalysis so the urinalysis, of course, looks at your urine. Uh, the color, clarity, specific gravity, pH, proteins, anything that might be of concern will show up in your urine. And of course, looking at the chart here, everything is normal. Uh, color, the only thing that had, was, was flagged was a specific gravity. And if you think about it, I had to, t I had to fast for 12 hours before I did this blood work. So I stopped eating or drinking at about 8 p.m. the night before, and this blood work was taken at about 9.30 the next morning. So it had been quite a long time before I had anything to eat or drink. So of course my urine is gonna be more concentrated, and that's what the specific gravity looks at, which is why it's a little off. But everything else is negative and well within the reference ranges. So now if we go on to my, uh, my blood count, my, my blood cell count, 
looking at my white blood cells, my red blood cells, hemoglobin, everything is nice and high. Uh, my white cell count, 9.8, my blood cell count, uh, 5.59, and all these are taken to 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 12th power cells per liter. Nothing else is showing up there, no red flags of any kind. If we go on to, and the other side of this, and looked at platelets, uh, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and they were all normal and within the reference ranges as well. If we go on to my thyroid stimulating hormone, one thing I thought about too was maybe I had some thyroid issues, which was causing the uh, facial hair alopecia. So I wanted to have that looked at. And you can see by the results that it's well within the reference range and uh, no concerns. My thyroid appears to be functioning normally, which is great. If we look at my blood iron levels, nice and high, basically right in the middle of that reference range. And that's not hard to understand because I eat a ton of red meat and iron rich foods. That's basically my diet is all geared towards um, being healthy, being strong, having healthy test levels, healthy fat levels, all of that. So certainly, um, you know, eating meat in my diet is a big thing. If you look at my vitamin B12, again, very high, 511. It's almost right up to that top end range. Uh, so no issues with, with my B vitamins. My prostate uh, is... Uh, Function normally as well, it's well within that reference range. So no prostate issues to think about right now. So glucose, so I mean that's, that looks at your blood glucose levels and if you are diabetic or pre-diabetic. Um, and looking at this here, it's well within the reference range and I am not pre-diabetic. So, so far everything looks good. I am, I am good and healthy on the inside. Uh, and again, some of you may be looking at, you know, my power belly in the uh, videos, thinking that I had a, a lot of visceral fat packed around my organs. Um, I can tell you that the reason why my abdominals are so pronounced is because I have been lifting for 30 years with no belt on, and I have been training for the last 20 years to build a core to throw heavy things. Uh, it's got nothing to do with uh, visceral fat. All right, so there was other things here too on my sheet. There's, there's about five or six pages here, so I'm not gonna go through everything, but I will go through the most important things, like I just did my sugars, I'll go through electrolytes, and just the most important things uh, that I think you should know. So the next thing would be my electrolytes, my sodium levels, potassium, chloride, all results are great, all within the reference range. If you look at my sodium level, it's nice and high, um, pretty much right in the middle of that reference range. And sodium is important for nerve and muscle function and just overall health. Potassium levels, nice and high, which really shouldn't surprise uh, anyone who knows me because I eat lots of potassium rich foods. Bananas, I eat probably two a day. Now chloride, chloride again, nice and high, right in the middle of that reference range. Uh, and chloride is important in blood pressure. So some of you may be thinking, well, he probably has high blood pressure for sure because he's a big guy. And, um, but no, my blood pressure is always very good. Most of the time, you'd be shocked to know that it's, it's been as low as 115 over 70. And on the day that I got this report from my doctor, uh, which was last week, that day my blood pressure was 122 over 82. Okay, so moving on to my lipid count. So this looks at your cholesterol, triglycerides, your LDL and your HDL. And that's probably one that people thought I may have as well, high cholesterol. I, I don't, my cholesterol is, is normal. My triglycerides are very good. The only thing that you'll see on this uh, report is my LDL is a little high and my HDL is a little low. They're just outside of that reference range and that's hereditary on my father's side. My, my dad has been on uh, cholesterol medication for many years 
And even I was on them for a little while. Back in 2010, probably for two or three years, I was on um, uh, Lipitor, was one of them. And I didn't feel good at all. I, my, I, I had leg uh, muscle cramps. I had joint pain. My, I just felt off. I didn't feel great. Then my doctor switched me to Crestor. Same thing. Um, muscle cramps at night. I would wake up and my legs would be aching. Uh, and then they put me on just a generic stat and thinking that that might help. Same thing. I felt terrible on all those medications, so I stopped taking them. And for the last several years, I have just been trying to keep those levels um, as best I can with diet and exercise. Of course, they'll be perfect because it's hereditary, uh, but they're not far off that reference range and my doctor is not concerned. The amount of food that I eat, it's certainly possible that I would have high cholesterol, but the amount of exercise and the foods that I eat um, keeps that in check. And I haven't really done any food related videos on my channel. Uh, I love to cook and I eat all good food, but if you go onto my Instagram page, you will see all the foods that I eat on a daily basis. And it's all good food, whole foods, very little processed food. Uh, and I do most of the cooking uh, here at the house. So of course, the family eats what I eat. <laughs> okay, so on to the uh, most important one probably, my testosterone level. So who here is curious to what Adam's testosterone levels might be? Are they low? Are they normal? Are they high? Let's find out. Um, so looking at my my total testosterone, you see the value here of 18.77 nanomoles per liter. Now my doctor rounded that up to 19. And when I went online and I was trying to find what the heck did 19 nanomoles per liter mean? Was it good, is it bad? I found a couple of websites and a couple of papers that had conversion tables in them. Uh, so when I plugged that number in, number 19, it came up to 548 uh, nanograms per deciliter. And if you look at that table, it's kind of flip-flopped. But those values are, are, are interchangeable. So 548 nanograms per deciliter, again, what the heck does that mean? I don't really know. I didn't know too much about testosterone. I didn't pay much attention to it, as I said. But the more that I've been looking into it, the more um, important I think it is, especially as I've uh, been getting older. But which one is important? Is it, is it total test? Is it free test? Is it bioavailable test? Uh, because a lot of it is locked up into your albumin and your sex hormone binding globulin protein. Right? And the more of that gets locked up as you get older. So when I was looking at free test and bioavailable test, I found a website, I think it was uh, Cleveland Heart Lab. Anyway, they had another formula uh, to plug all my values in and a reference table and ranges that I could compare them to. So when I plugged my values into the formula, it came out to 475 nanograms per deciliter. And when I looked at the range based on my age group, it was very high. I mean, the reference range, the top end range was 500 nanograms per deciliter. And my uh, percentage uh, availability, so really your bioavailable test is what is biologically available, right? It makes sense. So what is readily available for me to use? Uh, and it was about 87%, which I think was high. But one thing that I found interesting and confusing at the same time was that my free test, my percentage free test was quite low. Uh, now I know this table is based on greater than or equal to 18 year old, so, but, but mine fell outside of that reference rate on, on, on the low end. And I couldn't figure out how I would have a high bioavailable test but a low free test. And the only thing that I can think of, 
And again, if somebody knows the answer for sure, let me know in the comments section, that'd be great. Um, the only thing that I can think of is that more of it is being locked up into that uh, sex hormone uh, protein uh, because I'm 50. And I think more of that is gonna be locked up as I get older. Again, I'm not 100% sure. That's the only thing I can think of um, because when I look at the, at the bioavailable test, it makes sense. My lifts are still heavy. I'm still making gains. Not what I made, say, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. My gains have been slower, um, but I'm still making gains. I'm still lifting heavy. I'm still chasing those one rep maxes. Um, and so far, I'm healthy and strong. So there you have it. Um, I appear to be very healthy despite not being uh, ultra lean. And when I say ultra lean, I'm talking about those low single digit numbers, even the low teens, like 10, 11%, uh, I'm sorry, the low double digits. Because if you're trying to lift heavy and you're that lean, it's very hard on the body. And if you don't have the mass to help you with that, it is going to catch up to you eventually. And I've seen it lots of times where guys have been trying to lift heavy and they're very, they're very light in body weight or, uh, or, or lean as far as uh, uh, body fat percents go. And they don't, they don't last very long. They certainly don't last 35 years lifting uh, heavy weights. Um, but I have. So I think, I mean, I, I certainly contribute that to the full range movements um, which I push as far as longevity goes. And um, my, my diet, keeping my hormone levels high, my body fat levels high. Um, the heavy lifting certainly strengthens my joints. So all of that um, is all coming into play as far as longevity. Now, don't go anywhere because, as I said, this is episode 100 of the Ways and there is a t-shirt giveaway. Um, so you will get this sweet uh, SAF t-shirt that now has you can't fake strong on the back, which is certainly true. Um, there is no fake it till you make it. Um, so anyway, the question is, and for those of you who have been watching my videos over the last year, uh, I have said this one thing more than once as far as training, longevity, even life. <laughs> What is my number one rule um, when it comes to all those things? Uh, don't think about it too long. It's not that difficult. Don't overthink it. Um, what do I say? Don't be a this. And that is my number one rule uh, as far as training and life goes. The first person to answer that correctly in the comment section below will win one of these t-shirts. And I will ship it off to you free of charge will cost you nothing except for the correct answer. So thanks guys for sticking around for this uh, short little summary of my blood work. And I hope that will um, sort of ease anybody's um, questions about whether or not I'm healthy on the inside. I certainly appear to be, I certainly feel like I am. Um, so with that, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel, follow me on Instagram, uh, great stuff on there, nutrition, lifting, uh, memes, um, and stay tuned for episode 101 of The Ways, and have a great day.